Oh, oh, fish on. Oh, yes. Oh, there's something. Got it. Good, Smalley. Dude, this looks better than I thought. Do I got it? <gasps> yes, this is a good one. Dude, yes. Oh my goodness. Holy cow, it's a giant. I'm gonna go over my setup and how I fish the Nico Helgramite. I take it sideways here and I stick it through the head. What's up everybody? Man, I love it when I come across something just awesome. So let me give a little background real quick. I'm driving up through Virginia, up Interstate 81. Gonna be fishing with a guy tomorrow uh, if everything works out. And um, I have a little time to, before I get there. I was kind of, you know, keep my eyes open. And I just look over, see this, like go over across the bridge, see this body of water, like this river or stream, wasn't sure. I just like whip off right there, uh, the first exit, turn back around. There's a sign for a fish hatchery. Then it pulls, and I come down this road right beside this river. Dude, this place is gorgeous. Holy cow, that looks insane. Oh my, it looks so cool. How can I not fish that? Now this looks like something I have to fish. There's a pull off right there. There's a couple of cars already pulled off there. I don't know if they're fishing or not. I can't tell if they're fishing it or maybe they're hiking. But man, this just looks like a picturesque place to fish just the kind of place i like to find it's like a little waterfall dam or something over there a little deep pocket uh yeah i think i'm gonna try fish here uh, i was gonna go to the hatchery there's a hatchery right up the road but it says closed to visitors so i can't ex i can't go to that but i can definitely get in here and i, I imagine it's a really good smallmouth fishing stream it's a perfect size like it's a creek slash river size and just beautiful area there were some people that were they were down here but they were just swimming so they just came up through here. Hopefully, I'm good to fish here, which I think I am. Oh yeah, let's work our way up there and we'll start fishing kind of, well, unless I see something on the way. What, is that a fish? I don't know. Oh man, this place looks cool. Yeah, I wonder if it's a deep hole right there. Oh, oh, fish on. Oh yes, dude, that thing jumped way out of the water. Yeah, solid smolly. Yes, get out of here. Whoa, whoa, so many rocks. Mm, that, nice. That's nice right there. He was up under that current. Dude, what a place to catch some fish. Yeah, he had no trouble with that Helgramite. A solid 12 inch smolly at least. Well, that's what we came for. This place has turned out all right. Been here about 10 minutes. Another one. Another. Oh, that was a good one. Probably about the same size. Came off. He hit that thing and came off fast. Another one. There he is. Rock bass. Man, what a stop this turned out to be. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. 
<laughs> and it's another solid one. Man, they're just sitting down there. Come here. Man, these guys are thick. Hold still. That's a pretty one there. That's a pretty colored one there. Another 12, 13 incher. Like solid fish, at least smallies are solid. This place is pretty cool to come to. I'm not, I don't know what all that is. What, does it used to be a mill or a dam or why is it all like that? Well, let's, let's try to go on the other side. Maybe they used to be all the way, I guess they used to be all the way across and they broke it. Oh yeah, that's all concrete right there. So I'm trying to get on the other side of that and take a look. All right, even wearing felt sold shoes today, I'm being very careful. It doesn't take very far to fall to get hurt. And especially with these rocks, you can slip out really quick and just slam into these rocks and hurt yourself. Whew. So I take my time going around and stuff like this. I found an opening. Dude, there's crawdads everywhere in this river. There's a big one right there. Where you? Oh, there you are. Oh, there's a small right, little one right there I just picked off. Just sitting in this channel. All right, that up there looks like a little bit deeper water on that bank. So let's go up there and take a look at it. See if there's fishing. Yep. Take it. Got it. Oh, he kind of hit it kind of slow. Hey, that's a solid little creek size, river size. I know there's some bigger ones in here. We've already caught a couple 12 inch or so. Nice little guy. Oh, there's something. Got it. This one feels a little bit better. Crazy how they dig. I not real big one, but nice. <laughs> oh, he's not bad. He's about like those other two we caught. Good smallie. <laughs> All righty. They're biting it a little slow. Oh, that's actually bigger. That's the best one today. That is a nice smallie. That's a great size for just wading the stream. Um, well, he's probably 13 inches, 12, 13, but his body is big. Just, he's over a pound. That, this fish is over a pound, it's a thick one. Man, it's hard to get enough of the place like this. You just want it to keep on going. As I was getting right up here, the current's a little bit shallow. And it kind of drops off right there. That's kind of where I really wanted to fish. There's a no trespassing sign going up that way though. So I don't want to be going, not supposed to be going. There's another one, there's another one. I was just drifting it along that bank. I'm just kind of working it slow. Man, there could be all kinds of fish in there. Oh, he let go. He didn't get a good. He didn't get a good hook set on that one. I'm just drifting it down that bank over there. Oh, in the tree. Oh, but I caught a fish. 
<laughs> oh, we're good. Came loose. I threw it through the tree and then I saw my line go tight. Oh, dude. There's a couple big ones coming up here. Dude, that's crazy. All right, so I got to throw in there. I caught this guy. There was a couple that were like two pound, three pounders. I don't, I mean, those are the ones usually are, have a hard time getting a hit. Especially sometimes they'll, they'll follow just to see what's going on, but they won't bite. If I can catch one of those, that would make the trip. Well, I decided to rain a little bit while I was retying. I'm gonna start with the winnow. We'll throw it around a few times, see if anything uh, different reacts to it. We'll just upsize a little bit here. There's crawls everywhere, so we'll just go crawl and fish it for a little bit, then start working downstream if I don't get no bites. There's one. What is that? Oh, it's a rock bass. I know the crawl is going to work. I was hoping it might get one of those bigger ones. That's a nice rock bass, though. <laughs> Pretty guy. Dude, this looks better than I thought. It looks really good. Nice little drop. And this is a longer deep section, deep section right here see where we can find oh gotta nope nope not one well we're going back to Helgramite. i don't know why i thought they, i thought i'd get some out of this crawl let's just go ahead and go back to Helgramite because i can fish it better i think anyways Well, there's a fish right there. I fished all over that area above me. It looked even better. Didn't get anything. First cast right here, get one. I'm getting some quality river fish here today for waiting, waiting anyways. Just good size fish. I got it. <gasps> yes, this is a good one. This is a big one. Hope he's hooked good. Dude, a big smallmouth. I almost went back upstream when I was like, the way this river is set up, this is a perfect kind of like waiting and catching a bunch of fish. All these drops, you know there's a lot of fish. Well, I already knew that but it's the perfect place where there could be a lot of fish staged up because there's just so much drops and current and water flowing. Dude, this is a nice small mouth. <laughs> I barely felt him tap it. I was like, what? They're biting real soft. Dude, yes. Oh my goodness. Holy cow, that's a giant. Oh my goodness, that thing's a giant! Holy cow! There, that is a stud smallmouth. Look at the size of that. Uh, we're gonna weigh it real quick. Drifted that Nico Helgramite over there. I almost turned back upstream. I'm sure I missed a couple this big that were, there's probably been several, but finally got one of them to hit. Three pounds and one ounce. Probably 19 inches, three pounds, smally weighting. Dude, thank you, Virginia. Nice fish, nice fish. I've only been out for two hours. 
and I've wore them out. This has been a great stop. That's the kind of fish that's just, it makes your day if you catch it out of a creek, river, lake, anything. Big old healthy smallmouth. That's an old fish too. Those, those fish have been here a while to get that big. You wanna make sure you take good care of them. I think you'll be fine. Oh, no, oh, hold on a second. He's a little stunned. He's a little bit stunned here. We'll give him a second. He's coming back, I feel him. Oh, he's starting to bite on my finger a little bit. All right, you got it? You ready? You about ready to take off there? Yeah, this fish could be 15 years old. Especially these, these river ones. There he goes. Where's he at? There he is. Oh man, that's a nice fish. Get back over there in your spot. He's sitting back over there, back in the current. Dude, that'll get you pumped up. <laughs> And it, that was like a lightest little tap. I just felt a little tap and uh, I'm drifting it. So my line's kind of going down. So I went ahead and just set the hook on it. And it was a three pound smallmouth. Just a, that's a beast of a river, river smallie there. We're going to fish a little bit longer. There's no <laughs> next cast. Not quite the same size. But another smallmouth. There's one. Oh, nope, there's not one. We got it. <laughs> I thought it, the thing came and hit it. They came back for it, uh, rock bass. Oh. Man, another little one, but they are digging so hard in that current. <laughs> Uh, I gotta get a, I gotta get one out of here. I had a couple bites out of here, but I didn't get anything out of here. I know there's there's gotta be some fish that are gonna eat up over here. Oh, there's that carp. I don't know if you can see it or not. Or not that carp. There's there's one of them. That wasn't as big as the one I saw earlier, but that was probably 15 pounds. There's so many carp in here. I caught a carp before on this Helgramite. I don't know. I mean, they eat stuff sometimes. I mean, they eat all the time, I guess, but sometimes they're attacking. Oh! Oh, I thought that was the carp. I dropped it right in there where those carp were, and this fish came up and slammed it. He hit it while it was falling. That's a solid smolly. I knew there'd be some here. That's a nice fish. Yes, sir. -y. Nice guy right there. One more. <laughs> he was hanging out under that little bridge uh, opening there. We'll end it off with a solid rock bass. Dude, this was a a uh, smash and go kind of day. This was absolutely a textbook Helgramite fishing creek, smally fishing area. Um, just laid out perfectly the way the river is and perfectly for this lure and um, for the for smallmouth and just catching a bunch of them. Showed up, fished uh, two and a half hours and just wore them out. That is, I haven't, I have days where I go over eight hours kayaking. And can't catch half, half that many fish sometimes so it was perfect i started at like five o'clock and it's uh it's almost eight now but after i've come back out, out of the river and everything um just great i'm gonna go over my setup and how i fish the nico helgramite i've done a few videos on it and i've changed over the time you may it may be uh, redundant or you might not um you might be like well why are you going over that again well i changed how i use it 
I got new people coming all the time, new subscribers and new people coming to watch these videos. And I, I get, I'm sure I've made more videos on YouTube with the Nico Helgermeyer than anybody. And I've, I've been using them a long time and I've used them a lot, um, like all the time. And I've always have it with me. It's just, it's a go-to lure that I know just sometimes gets those fish to bite um, when other, when I, when I don't, maybe I don't know how to use other lures as well, but I know how to use this lure and to get some of them fish to bite. And it's not something they see every day. Plus, it's something very natural in rivers, and it's something that smallmouth especially love to eat, a Helgramite. First off, if you'd like to order some Nico Helgramites, I have a discount code. This is the Obsidian. Probably my favorite color. I love the Obsidian, the Mudbug, and the brown one, and the natural, and uh, they're basically all good. But I, I like those natural colored ones. Uh, Helgramites are usually brown or black, and um, I, j I don't know. I, I just like them. The Mudbug one, I really like. That's probably my favorite overall. Um, especially in clear water. These are these are mainly lures I'm using in clear water. But if you if you want to order some of those, I got a discount code and a uh, the website link below in the video description. 10% off, and I earn a little bit every time I uh, somebody uses my discount code. So how am I fishing it as of right now? What is this? August 2021. This is the way that I have it set up. The way that I like to do it for wading and for kayaking. Um, I've kind of like I said I've changed over the time, but um, first off I'm using this is a new rod, but this is this is a setup I like now. It's a 6.6 uh, six medium, uh, and this is the Abu Garcia Veritas, and uh, just ordered this rod. I really like these rods, but a 6.6 six to 6.9 six medium rod. I used to use a medium light. I'll ch I'll show you why I changed uh, in a minute, but uh, probably medium, uh, maybe up to seven foot. But uh, I like to have the 6.6 six six, six nine range because. Uh, that, down there, I had lots of room to cast, but some places I go, it's, it's a lot tighter. And a 6.6 six rod, I can really get it a lot more cast than I could a 7-foot rod. I've tried those. So I like that. I like the firmness or the, the, the how the power is. And a, a better quality rod, this, these rods are $100. A better quality rod is a little bit stiffer, too, and you get better control. A 2,000-size reel, it's a Abu Garcia Revo X. Uh, I think I have 12-pound braid, but 10 to 15-pound braid. With a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. I'm using a Seaguar red label fluorocarbon leader. Um, I've upsized that. So I've ups I used to use a medium light and a lot of times I'd go with 8 pound leader line. Well, I've upsized the leader line because this 10 pound, I feel like it's a lot tougher than 8 pound. I don't know what, I've broken off a bunch of times on 8 pound uh, rocks and things like that. 10 pound just feels extra good. The medium gives me a little bit more power into the hook set and control. And with the 10 pound line, I can really set the hook well. And I, I like a little bit stiffer now because I used to use a Ned Rig style hook with the, just to open like the, um, the uh, what's it called, the uh, small wire like Ned Rig style hook. Well, I've changed to a different, um, it's a Z-Man Finesse Bullet Z. I'm usually going to go with 1 10th ounce or 1 15th ounce, um, just, just depending. Either, either one, um, 1 10th ounce is usually the heaviest I'll go and you can cast it fine on the set, set it'll cast really far. If you're using um, six, eight, 10 pound fluorocarbon, something like that, you can still cast a 1 10th ounce. 1 15th ounce may get a little tougher, but I can still cast it on this setup and it has a little bit slower sink. Um, and I, what I want it to do, I want it to sink slow because I want it to carry in the current like I was doing earlier. And let me show you how I rig it up. I use the same Helgramite all day. I use this, actually I use the same hook and Helgramite in a tournament recently and caught probably 10 or 15 fish on it and they, they will just keep on lasting. So this is how I'm gonna hook it up. I take it side, sideways here and I stick it through the head and come out the side, just little little pocket right there. I'm gonna slide it around since it's really tough, it's not gonna tear going over um, this little bit bigger piece right here. So I'll go over that, come around, all right, like this right here. So it's like that, and I'm going to just stab it in. It's about the second rib down on these. Stab it through sideways, and I come out the other side. Now, why am I doing it sideways instead of up and down? I don't know. It's just the way I like to do it. And But mainly is because I feel like it, it keeps it weedless even better. So if I slide the hook down, it's exposed right there. But if I slide it up, it's you're barely going to get hooked up. Now, sometimes I'll tuck it in. And just like hook it into itself, you know, to keep it totally weedless. But a lot of times I just slide it up sideways and it's that hook is barely sticking out. Uh, these hooks are very strong, it's a stiffer hook. Uh, I've hooked a lot of fish with these hooks and haven't had any of them bend out. 
the like the Ned Rig wire ones, they'll bend out. Plus, I'm throwing this and I want it to bounce along the rocks or fall into the trees and bounce through there. And the Ned Rig style open, I, I, I used to, I think you probably, you might get a little bit better hookup ratio, I'm not sure, but you'll lose a lot of them. This one here, you're gonna throw it in there and I got hung up like twice today, but I've got them both unhooked. It's gonna tumble down. You want it to catch in that current, kind of tumble, maybe lay and tumble. And that sometimes the fish are, when they're hammering it, I had a couple that as soon as they hit the water, they slammed it. That bigger one and uh, several of them I caught today, I threw it out there, let it fall to the bottom, and it may be just tumbling barely, but that's what those fish look at. They, they see it down there and that looks more normal. And a lot of times they will like, okay, let me, let me see what that thing's gonna do. Oh, that looks normal. And then they'll just suck it up. And when they bite it, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm kind of giving it a lot of slug, let it tumble. If I feel a, just a thud, I'm, I'm just snapping real quick. I'm like, mm, maybe get a good hook set or just a quick set and then see if he's on there. Sometimes it's just a little fish pecking at it. So I'll, let, I'll leave it going. Sometimes it's a bigger fish that barely grabbed it. I'll set it and I don't reel it in. I'll just, I'll just see if he's on there. If I don't feel nothing, then I'll leave it tumbling. A lot of times they'll come back and bite it. And a lot of times those, those fish, they, when they're sitting there in the current, if you ever watch, you know, fish in the river and they, or what smallmouth do, they just sit there, something comes along, they swim over to it and they just eat it and they'll swim back over to their spot. You know, they're not, they're not hammering it and like taking off like they would a minnow or something like that. They're just, they're eating it and they're just barely moving off. And a lot of these times you might not even know is you have one on there. So if you, if you think a fish is on it, set the hook. Cause they're usually, when they bite it, they're sucking it in to eat the thing. Um, they're not going to like just snap at it and do all kinds of stuff. So that's, that's my tips and helpful, um, stuff for fishing the Nico Helgermite. I fish it a ton. I may get, I may overfish it. I don't know if you get tired of that. Sorry, but I like to go to the things that work, especially when I go to a new body of water. I've never been to this place before. Never even seen it before. That was just an awesome day. And you know, I want to, this, this setup right here is just perfect, lightweight, easy to carry. This a uh, hundred dollar rod, about a hundred dollar reel. These lures are um, what seven, eight dollars for a pack, but I use the same one all day. Didn't have to change it. Didn't have to change the hook. I uh, just had to change up my leader line one time when I, I got it rubbed on some rocks. Well, just thank everybody for watching and uh, I'm thankful that I'm get to uh, make these trips and get to go to different places. Thank you for Nico for uh, helping me out. They, uh, like I said, they, they pay me a little bit when people buy some lures. So um, you can go on their website and purchase some stuff and uh, I make a little bit of money off that and that helps me keep driving down the road, putting gas in the truck and everything because gas costs a lot. So especially when you're driving all the place like I am. So thanks so much for watching.